Hello everybody and welcome to Ed's Boat. Right, in the last episode we were talking about our trip, but there's no time for that at the moment. I need to get on with some work. Today I'm in the well deck and I'm doing a spot of painting. Now the weather is okay today. Yesterday it was absolutely horrible. The wind was really strong and it was officially measured at hold on to your false teeth on the Jesus Christ scale. But today, lovely, the sun's out. Uh, a bit patchy, light breeze, but not too bad. That's going to help keep me cool. Now, the painting technique I'm going to use is the roller, brush and pig ignorance technique. Uh, this has been documented many times on YouTube and this is my version of it. What I'm doing is I'm going to paint the well deck and use that as a practice for when I do the rest of the boat. So it's not so important in here. I can afford to make a mistake or two, but out on the roof where everybody's going to see it, I need to get a bit of practice in first. So I'm nice and comfortable with it. Let's have a look at the stuff I'm using. Okay, I'm just using a small foam roller, medium sized brush and a small rolling tray. Now what I've done is I've coated the rolling tray in aluminium foil and you put the paint into that, use the roller and then when you finish, you take the roller off using the aluminium foil, wrap it all up inside and it makes a tidy little bundle like that and your tray's nice and clean and your roller's disposed of, you don't get paint everywhere. It works really well. So what I'm going to do is uh, Load that up with a bit of paint and we'll start rolling on. Right, the paint I'm using is International Top Black. This is the Oxford Blue. Uh, pour a little bit out into your tray, but bear in mind that you'll need to put the tin down on some sort of wood or a bit of card or whatever, because you cannot stop the dribbles afterwards. It doesn't pour out very well. But I've loaded up the tray and roller with a bit of paint. And if I can do this one handed, which is going to be a bit awkward, I'll show you just quickly what the technique is. Um, we'll cover this a bit better when I do the roof, but let's have a quick look at it now. Okay, I've loaded up my roller and we're just going to take it onto the edges and start rolling in the paint. And what you'll see, oh, if I get the camera straight, it's difficult to do this with one hand, is all these horrible little bubbles, air bubbles, come to the surface as you're layering the paint on. Um, you can see that, see how mottled that is? And this is where the brushing technique comes up. So you just roll it on, make sure you get plenty of paint on that, a good layer. And you roll that. I'm told you shouldn't do this in large areas. You should try and concentrate it into, I don't know, what is it, two foot square sort of areas. I'm just gonna do down the edge there, all the way along. Look, I apologize for my camera work. It's difficult to see what you're doing and, and film it at the same time, doing all the edges. And then when you've got a good layer of paint on it, Go to a dry brush, a soft brush, and then you just start tipping off like that. And that takes all the bubbles out. And because you're using a soft, fine brush, this is a Harris brush, which to be honest is not the best brush I've ever used, but it's okay. And this takes all the air bubbles out and settles the paint down. And then when it sags, it should just fall down into a nice glossy finish. The trick is to press reasonably firmly, but with a light touch, if you know what I mean. And that will just settle it all out. It won't scar or mark the paint. It will take out all these bits and pieces. And hopefully, it will leave a nice, smooth, glossy finish. Well, I've put a layer of paint on in the well deck, and I'm just letting that dry now. I'm not going to mess about with it, or touch it up, or... or be silly with it I'm just going to leave it to dry and then we'll have a quick look at it later on and see how well I did in the meantime we need to have a look at the rest of the boat now since I came back from my trip you all think that I turn up on the boat and just goof off I just sit down there watching the television drink coffee and just have a nice time actually I do do that but no I have been working a bit so let me show you how far I've got the first job I've done is to mount the shower base. That is the finished position that it's going to go in. And I've put the drain in it and that runs under the floor and comes out of a little hose pipe there into a pump. Now originally I was going to use an under the floor pump, which is this one here. This is a C flow uh, system. I was going to mount it under the floor, out of the way where you couldn't see it. Um, but when I came to try I just did not trust it. What was happening is the pump is really good. It pumps oh, a massive amount of water really quickly. Um, but I had some sort of reliability issues with, with it priming. I didn't like the way it primed. It was just a bit too slow. It took 
well on occasions it didn't do it every time but on occasion it was taking a few minutes to prime up um, and running a shower to fill that little box up and it taking so long to prime up it, i would definitely have a flood with it so i just didn't trust it it wasn't reliable enough uh, after i bought it somebody actually said to me they, those sea flow things aren't very good i wish i'd listened to or taken advice beforehand but uh, it seems he's absolutely right but don't worry about that i have got another use for that later on but uh, what i've done is replaced that with the good old-fashioned gulper pump now i'm not going to mount it there exactly that was there just for a trial and i had it wired up to a temporary battery but these are rubber diaphragm pumps you know they're, they're well known um, it just sits there chugging away waiting for water to come along and then just pumps it out of the side now i've tested it tried it everything works really really well and i'm going to mount the pump above the floor this time because it's a gulper pump um, and that's just for ease of maintenance and what i'll do is i'll probably put some sort of noise baffle cover over it which will double up as a shelf or a, uh, a set of drawers or something like that um, and then we can finish off the shower now what i've got to do is line that wall out there with the shower backing that's on its way it's not arrived yet and i've got to build a new wall these are just temporary put a new wall in and then line that out uh, but i say when that arrives um, the drain system in it if you just lift that up there's a trap in there where you can take out anything that might jam up the pump they're quite easy it just comes out push that back in and it's good to go so uh, that's the shower pump but i'll let you a shower system shall i say uh, put in the base in there and i'll let you know when the rest of it happens but uh, there's a lot more work to do in the bathroom area but uh, that's what i've done in here so far the other job i've done is the water boiler now just before my big trip i did mount the boiler drill a hole in the roof for the flue um, but I wasn't piped up. Well now I've piped it in so if I go underneath I've got my cold water in and that's hot water out and that's my gas inlet and my isolation valve. Now this will be boxed in here with a cover and there'll be an extra sort of uh, work surface that goes in the corner there so that'll tidy it all and make it look nice. And this particular boiler is has a battery ignition on it so if I undo that just drop it down you'll see there's two batteries in there um, which uh, gives a continuous spark until the thing ignites. I've bled it all up, so should we try it? Yeah, let's try it. So, we're all piped up to the hot water tank. I've got my settings on reasonably hot. We have a look at this little window here. You should be able to see it sort of ignite and light up. So let's see if we can do that. So I'll turn the tap on. There we are. And it all ignites and gives you water on demand. So I go to the tap, touch that, nice warm water coming out of there. I can turn that up so it's a bit hotter, but actually that's getting pretty hot now, so I'll turn that off. And as soon as you turn it off, it goes out straight away. Turn the tap back on, it should start igniting. And lights up again. And then goes straight off. So I don't have any continuous pilot light. It's literally hot water on demand. And that works really well, and I was really pleased with it. I've got it turned up reasonably high at the moment. It will go up a tiny bit higher, and that will turn, well, that, yeah, that will turn up. That's the aggressiveness of the flame, and that's the actual water temperature. So I could, that's about, I don't know, three quarters of the way up, and that's pretty good. But it works really well, and I'm really pleased with it. Now, the only little issue I've had is nothing to do with the boiler as such. It's just one of the fittings under here. I'll go underneath and just touch it. It's okay at the moment, but if I leave the water on for any length of time, I get a little drip out of there. So I'm going to have to take this fitting off. I think it's a problem with the fitting rather than the actual shower itself, because this one is okay. It's the same fitting. I think this is just a bad fitting. So I'm going to take that off, reseal that just to make sure everything's fine and I don't have any problems down the road. And then I'm ready to just tidy all this pipe work up a bit, uh, box it all in, finish off the kitchen work surface there, and that is hot water and I've run the pipe work for that just around the corner into the bathroom and I have got a hot water outlet there so I've got one valve which will go up to the sink and the other one will run round and come out the back of the shower there for the shower so that's all the groundwork done as well so that's another job that I've done well the paint had a few hours to go off let's just have a quick look at it now what happened is after I'd been Letting the paint harden for a little while, we had a shower of rain come over just out of nowhere. So there's a few drops, but most of the paint had gone hard, so it shouldn't affect that. So hopefully that side will be okay. 
but I'm quite pleased. Now, ignore the dents and grind marks on it. I can't get rid of those. They're just too deep into the metalware. But the actual finish and sheen of the paintwork is pretty good. It's all right. I mean, it won't get out like the rust imperfections and the wear marks and this sort of thing. But yeah, it's okay. Quite pleased with it. So, uh, yeah, that was a, a valuable insight into how to layer this type of paint on, ready for when I do the roof. The sun's come out again and I've got the covers off, just letting the paint harden up a bit. That shower of rain, I don't think affected it too much. Seemed okay, got away with it. So that exercise in painting, all that practice that I had, worked out quite well, quite pleased with it. If I'd have used a slightly softer brush, I reckon I've had an even better finish. So yeah, learnt quite a lot from just doing that well deck. Right, in the next episode, well, I might have made a mistake. If you'd like to find out what that was, why don't you tune in? In the meantime, take care and I'll see you soon.